Hi everyone, my name is Jin Kai Chen from University of Southern California, Computer Science Department. Today I'm going to talk about my PhD thesis about autonomous mobile robot navigation in urban environment. So the mobile service robot is a very now nowadays you see it's very common to for those robot work with the human. A lot of time it start from military work with uh, like a bomb disposal or different kind of like a military task. But nowadays the mobile robot become more popular in the emergency rescue case or in uh, like a civilian usage like orderly care. Of course in a space like a Mars exp exploration you can also see those robots commonly in use. So my research topic is about the mobile robot navigation and then I categorize the mobile robot navigation in three different kind of environment. One thing is called a uh, street navigation, which usually the robot is run on the real road by the vehicle. And then you need to follow the, all the different traffic rule, landmarks, and, and then also it requires a lot of different sensing all together with a very relatively long range sense because the car speed is relatively fast. Another type of navigation is in the indoor, which usually is in a like a confined environment. It can be an office or in a factory. Like a, the route can be determined, or or it could be just free free running in the indoor environment. So in this environment, usually re only require short sensing range, and sometimes it doesn't even need any range finder. You could use some like a fiducio or some like a pre existing. Uh, I mean, like a mag, like a magnet signal or something to to guide the robot. Usually, this kind of uh, uh, indoor environment take very the robot run really low speed, and then the lighting variance and in environment variance could be pretty different from the outdoor environment. So my work is more focused on what I'm calling urban navigation. So urban navigation basically is the in between indoor and outdoor navigation. So our robot basically we have some scenario we will need to be able to run the indoor and also get outdoor running in some type of like a campus environment. So usually it requires you have a middle basically mid range sensing and then capable to basically find out the road without actual landmark or without actual road like a boundary like the vehicle has. So that's pretty much my primary uh, focus. So what kind of challenge does the urban navigation has? Of course, for all the robot navigation, the primary first thing is like the system need to run in real time. So it's very different from a lot of different computer vision or different algorithm. You have enough time to process the image and, and then make some decision like object recognition. But when you're doing on a robot, you pretty much only have like a hundred millisecond to make sure the robot will be able to find a, a decision really quickly. And then of course, the robot needs to be very robust because even a single frame of a, a wrong decision, it could cause the, the car crash or, or different accident. So robustness and then also the fast, that's the pretty much all the first two criteria for all the robot navigation. Another thing for the urban navigation is um, sometimes the environment will not have a GPS available. Of course, when you went into the building, you cannot rely on GPS. But even you are outside of a building, a lot of time in the urban area, the, the high tall building will, will block the GPS signal. So you are not able to rely on, on the GPS to localize the robot itself. So my focus will be on uh, primary on the vision localization and navigation. So that requires you use a camera to find out where you are and how to get to your destination. The problem for the, the camera is like uh, um, each camera will have different kind of field of view. So that means when the robot starts turning left to right, the view from the robot can be very different. So a lot of time, just a little bit turning, you will see completely different scenes. So that, that will be one big challenge. And then another one will be a lot of time you can see on the ground, there's a lot of um, like a landmark bike in the scene. So that means it's hard 
for the robot to find out where exactly is the road, robot need to deal with those compact shape. And of course, the shadow and lighting will always change when you are running outdoor. So here's the, the past project I have been been working on before. We first we build um we build the Billbot. Basically it's a robot that contains with a lot of computers and allow us to do a lot of experiment. And second one will be the GIST and CNC navigation. Basically we combine the two um, very famous uh, computer vision features called GIST and CNC feature. We use two to um, navigate the system. Another one, my, my most focus is on the uh, visual recognition. Basically, it's a um, basically basically it basically try to make the robot find the road and then find out how to stay on the road and then just keep mo move forward. And then later on, I have an entire full integrated system. I will show you later. And then the latest work recently will be using the deep learning to predict. Where's the main point? That's also part of extension of um, role recognition. So here's today's outline. I'm going to introduce what is Billbot 2.0, and then I'm going to talk about different role recognition systems. Then I will show you the full navigation system in the end. So what exactly is Billbot 2.0? Billbot 2.0 basically is a be a wolf PC cluster on a robot. So it have a wheelchair base and then have like a eight computer 16 core on top of the, the robot. So we have designed this robot for high performance computing and allow us to run a lot of different complicated algorithms on top, especially vision algorithm. As I previously mentioned, it takes a lot of time to compute. So we utilize this kind of parallel processing system be able to run the robot in a real time and then be able to do a lot of vision processing. So here's just a quick uh, overview of uh, how the, what inside the Billbot. Primarily the top we have a four custom computer and bottom have four. And in the middle yellow is a water cooling block. So we use that to, to cool the entire system. So over the year, we also keep upgrading the, the Billbot Initially, we only have one camera, one laser and finder, and one encoder. But we add more camera, IMU initial management unit, and also Kinet as a 3D camera. And then in the later latest one, we have an entire full 3D suit of a Velodyne, which is a 360, I mean, full laser range finder. And we also have a Bumblebee stereo camera, and also an action is like a like Kinet. So here is just an example environment how the billboard is running around. You can see it's a lot of different challenge, different landmark, shadow, different conditions. That's all the environment we have been tested on. So um, in order to make a robot to move, what exactly is the autonomy for the mobile robot? So autonomy means like a robot need be able to know where you are and then know how to move to the goal. So the know where you are basically what we mean this is localization system. So we use the vision to do it. So that means you need to identify a landmark and then try to recall like a human. You recall, you see this landmark and you try to find out, oh, I've seen this before somewhere. Then we be able to associate exactly where we are. Another part is like, uh, if you don't know where you are, the navigation system still need to be able to maintain your heading direction making the robot stay on the road and then until you recognize yourself know where you are and then, or when you are in the junction you need to make a decision should I turn left or turn right so my first paper I will talk about is the monocular vision in the using the road segmentation and boundary estimation so what exactly is a road recognition so road recognition basically is talking about um, try to given a a 2D image, just a flat image, and you try to identify where exactly is the row inside the image. So traditional way is like uh, try to depend on the color, or depend on the we call the structure, the the vanishing point. For color, it's like uh, you try to do some chemical clustering or 
like a segmentation, try to try to isolate the the row area from its flanking area. Then you try to fit a triangle shape or some type of row shape on top to to extract the the row region. Another way to by the structural way to do it is find the bench point first. So bench point is is an intercept point between two row boundaries. So because the camera perspective view, it will always meet in one point. That's what we call a bench point. So our system works like this. First, we have um, a row segmentation system on top, and then the boundary system on the bottom. So we try to utilize both complementary method to create a very robust navigation system to find out the road, even the robot don't know where it is. How does the road recognition works is um, we take the very famous fashion swap color segmentation algorithm, try to segment out the image into different color region. Then we start using the common filter to keep track where is the raw color looks like. Then by keep tracking and updating the common filter, we be able to maintain our current raw appearance and stay on the road. So on the bottom, you see there's a, a blue window that we call a fixed window. Basically, that's the, just in the middle, bottom area. We know the robot is always on the ground, so we only search on the bottom, in the blue window and orange window. And then, most of the time, we want the robot stay in the row center, so we only look for the image center. But, but when the robot starts to swerve left and right too much, then it will switch to a floating window, try to search around to make sure you be able to recover from the, the current row area. Another way to compute uh, a row is find the mention point first. So this is the first attempt while we try to find the mention point. The way how we do it is using a Gabor image. So we first take the uh, four different orientation with different three scale of a Gabor pyramid. Then we average out to create the average Gabor image. Then in each pixel, we be able to sort by their Gabor response. Then we use the first uh, top one and top two response as our like a uh, judgment level. We want to make sure there's enough uh, difference between the first response and second response. Then we can create the confidence map like like indicate in the uh, uh, red area. Let's have a higher response area. That's what the area we want to proceed for the next stage. So the next stage is like uh, once we get those confidence pixels, we want to vote. What it was more likely the bench point in the image. So the way to do it is you take on every single pixel, you vote for your half disk area showing in the pink. Then all the pixel based on how far from the lab bench point candidate and then can candidate, and then what's the angle difference between between the the point from itself the orientation. Then once you sum up with all the score, you'll be able to find out the strongest uh, response area will be your top one choice of a vention point. The problem for this voting mechanism is it's really slow. So we want to run on robot need to be real time. That's why we propose one technique called non-uniform non sampling, which we only do a grid sparse sampling or entire image. And then because it's a continuous uh, video, we be able to use in uh, basically kind of like a memory, memory map to only vote in a dense area in small region based on the previous frame. That allows us to reduce 97% of computation time and make sure this can run in 16 milliseconds. So once we have the vanish point, now we want to find out what exactly is the boundary. To find the boundary, we first extend um, 29 different lines from the vanishing point by a uh, 5 degree uh, spacing. And then in each line, we evaluate what's the more likely uh, left boundary or right boundary based on two score. First thing is a like cover difference. We want to make sure um, if there exists a, a boundary, the left uh, color R2 and then the right color R1, they have enough difference. And another way to judge the whether there is a line or not is based on um, the Gabor variance. So if there exists a line, most of Gabor pixel on the top, they will have a, a consistent score. 
So based on the variance and then the color difference, we'll be able to compute the final distribution where is the left boundary and right boundary. That's what you, you see here. Left boundary indicate in green and right boundary indicate in red. And once we find left and right, now we can control the robot to stay on the row. Basically, we just try to align the row center with the image center. So we always want to make sure robot is facing straight to the uh, messaging point. And here's a demo video. As the as you can see in the video, the top left is the robot where we just film it, and top right is the region based uh, region based method to find out where exactly is the the, the row region in the center, and then the bottom right is the vanishing point uh, vanishing point and its memory map. So by combining the both, we will be able to navigate the robot all autonomously. All right. And then we also compare with our system with all of the other two state of art system, one using the color base and the other using the vanish point base. So you can see we be able to to perform better because we have a more robust and a more hybrid system than other other methods. Overall we also have a lower uh, distant error score. So so we try to we manually annotate each image and compare the row center difference between their algorithm and our algorithm. So we also do some real navigation route testing. Most of the time you see a robot be able to follow the the mesh point to get into the, the final destination, but occasionally you will see some false positive because that corner area looks really like um bench point so that's sometimes it, it can fail so overall we have a, a, a system that running a uh, two different type type of algorithm and by combining them both we have a best uh, uh, approach for the role navigation role recognition navigation system and then we propose some new technique called non-uniform sampling and also global response variance yeah, and then it's compared with the state of art role recognition algorithm, and it performed pretty well. The next one, we also keep exploring how can we improve on the mention point. So this time we decide instead of using the Gabor pixel to determine the mention point, we want to use something more robust uh, feature to recognize the the. The, the vanishing point. So in here, we decide to use in um, contour segments instead of a couple of pixels. So we have now we have each line segment to vote for the bench point. And then we also decide um, since we are working on the ground vehicle, we know the robot won't fly. So the horizon line usually don't change un unless the terrain is tilted. And even its tilt, we'll be able to recover from the, the IMU data. So we want to simplify our vanishing point um, voting scheme to only one dimension, which is only on the horizon line. And then we also integrate the road recognition system with obstacle avoidance to, to, to make sure not only you be able to follow the road, and when you need to avoid obstacle, you, you will also be able to return back to the, the road. So the way how we do it this time is like uh, we first compute the edge map using the Kenji edge detection. Then from the Kenji edge map, we be able to extract the each line segment using the half transform. Then we filter out a lot of um, like a noise lines. For example, vertical line, horizontal line. We want to filter all this out because we know it will not be a uh, right candidate to vote for the mention point. Then we be, we use those lines to vote for mention point. Then once we have those mention points, we perform a lot of tracking and also a forward projection because sometimes the, the, the computation take maybe a couple minutes second while a robot is moving. So once the result coming out, robot already moved a couple steps away. So we want to make sure we be able to remap the, the result to the latest uh, images. 
So the volume scheme basically this time is like uh, based on the line segment as I, I said before. And then the voting candidate is only one dimension. So you can see on the screen is in indicated in yellow dot. But this time we extend the 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 VP candidate also from the left and right outside of the image. That allow us to recover the match point, not even basically not even in the image. We be able to recover those extreme cases when robot move too much to the left or too much to the right. So the voting score this time is based on the two. One is the, the length of the, the line and also what's the distance to what's the intercept distance to the your voting candidate. So if line hit that uh, VP candidate directly right on it, that means it's, it's the hit set point will be really small. So that's what we're looking for. So basically the score is based on the how far what's the length what's the length of the line the longer is better and then how close to the VP point that's you want to short so in this kind of voting scheme we are not only limited to vote for left boundary and right boundary this time we be able to track multiple row lines at the same time as you can see in the, in the image on the bottom we be able to track three line at, 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 or four line actually at this time and then by tracking each line independently we be able to have more robust result, and then after we track multiple lines, we also estimate what's the more likely row center that indicated in the blue, uh, small blue line on the bottom of the image. So we keep maintaining the distance from that the the row center to each line. Then tracking the where is current row center also help us to navigate to the end. What I mean is like uh, um even you are facing to the bench point the robot can still drift to one side of the road even you have right uh, heading so this time not only estimating the heading we also need to add a little bit bias a little bit like uh, um, lateral estimation to correct the those uh, drifting yeah by indi by estimate where is is the road center so every time when the robot actually correct itself it's not only correct how far from the road center and then also how far from, how far from the uh, bench point and then plus how far from the road center those two estimation that help us really stay in the center what i'm showing in the uh, in this slide is um at the top you can see um the the blue line is the the best result is the road center basically show how much deviate from the um from the row the left is start point and right is in the uh, finish point so you can see if we don't use any other sensors no camera nothing we just ba based on the the tracking how much wheel is turning that's using the wheel encoder so by tracking the left wheel and right wheel is in the green line you can see it fail really quickly because every time when you robot move left and right it will have a slip so once we add the another thing so that we can add the IMU initial measurement unit is more like a compass so you'll be able to correct a little bit slip, slippage based on the compass reading and then that will allow you to finish the entire route but you can see it still deviates a lot in the red line so if we add the if we add the everything with the only the venture point estimation in the pink line you can see we do slightly better but in the end it still drift quite a bit but once we add a lateral estimation in the blue line you can see it's really stay in the center very well and without too much drift it, there's only a low level like a left and right uh, shifting but it's not uh, that, that much big drift in the end so here's a video about um, the, the, the scene so we decided to film the, the video in the first day of the school when there's crowd of people so the a lot of time the robot were not able to see the road and there's a lot of obstacle in front of robot as you can see in here we purposely disable the obstacle avoidance so robot just purely rely on the uh, the road, road navigation to find out where is the mention point and stay on the road so another point is um, you rather to not identify some road segment instead of recognize the wrong one so we if 
in some frame it doesn't recognize anything it will just rely on its uh, tracking data to to maintain on the road and stay focused to to go forward so same thing we compare with this algorithm with our previous method and also the other two state of art algorithm you can see on the manual annotated data we can perform even better and then we also do more testing in a different uh, lighting condition and then crowd environment you can see this method is also more robust than the previous one we just mentioned and then MU data also helps to stay on the road when there's no clear lines so overall we present a new monocular vision navigation which is not assuming a triangulation we will be able to track multiple lines and this method can handle more complex shape surface and then also the shadowing on the ground and we test more than five kilometers on this uh, autonomous drive so so it's pretty extensive tested and this method worked pretty well okay so the the last one i'm not going to talk about my recent work about deep learning so we already talked about um we already talked about how how important is the bench point and what bench point can do so in order to find a bench point the previous two Mm, traditional way to the previous two paper I'm trying to do basically one is based on the gobble filter and the other one is based on the half transform so all this we call a uh, um, traditional handcraft method but you know those methods also have a limitation basically you just it doesn't really learn or, or getting better um, without you tweak the, 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 the features so we want to find out is that any way we can use the machine learning with those like uh, for the machine learn what exactly the role look like that's why we propose um, deep VP basically it's a uh, machine point detection using the deep learning so in the many field you can see recent years those handcraft features um, for the different application usually you use um, SIFT plus official vectors or DPM to do object recognition or you different uh, way to do a segmentation and counter detection but recently years you can see all the uh, uh, computer vision now it get basically beat by the, the, the deep learning by the convolution neural network so there's significant improve using the convolution ne neural network method so you get a 60% more improvement on object re recognition using AlexNet and then deep lab have 11% on the image segmentation and deep control for 9% compared with the old like a GPB or SCG method so the question is can we also apply the the same kind of deep learning method on the bench point detection the answer is yes but in order for the deep learning to work you will need a good database a good or you could large database the most of a database are too small so you can see even the largest one is the one I collect in 2012 it's only 25,000 image in here we are talking about million of images so it's not only images also need with label so that's why we decided to create a new database called deep VP the VB database now it contains more than 1 million of image with the label where is the venture point how do we do that basically we utilize on the Google's tree view so as you can see Google already do a lot of work for us it they take a picture with all over the world and then not only only the images itself more importantly it contains the camera information and also each road information that allow us to interpret and estimate where is the vanishing point in each images so in here we take more than 1 million of uh, images from Google Street View it have a 23 route across 21 countries so the way how we do it is basically in each GPS location we will collect a uh, 15 by 15 different um, uh, VP coordinate um, uh, images so each location we have a 225 images and then 
based on the camera pitch, we be able to estimate where is the horizon line, and then based on also based on where is the heading direction of the the, the vehicle, we know what, where is the center of the mission point. So using these two, we be able to automatically recover the label, the location in the images. Where is the VP location? Here is some example image. So you can see we can collect on all different kind of environment, and then there's also a road from, I mean, left drive, right drive, and then snow, desert, all different kind of environment on the world. And here's the classical uh, convolution neural network. We're using the classic LXNet. We take the original input image of 300 times 300, we scale it down, then fit into the entire network. Um, a little, only a little difference is like in the last two four collective layer FC six and FC seven, we only use uh ten twenty four of a node instead of uh four ninety ninety four forty ninety, and then in the final output is a uh, two twenty five which map into the uh fifteen by fifteen coordinate, and then for those one million image we take um seventy five percent images for the training, the first 75 for the training, and then last one quarter for the testing. So there's no overlapping between the image. That means whenever the testing one, the, the system never seen those images before. And overall, we use those testing image to compare result. The result is significant better than the traditional method I proposed if we don't consider with the tracking and all, all other 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 things to improve the score, just pure by image, uh, each image is independent. Deep VB method achieved ninety two point zero nine percent of accuracy compared with only forty seven ninety nine percent, and also computation time is also a lot faster because it doesn't need to have a a, a lot of voting. It's just a lot of uh convolution or all the multiplication stuff so in the same computer you only take half second compared with the the traditional um, gobble bath methods it will take 15 seconds and then also because this can also utilize the gpu it will be even significantly faster a thousand times more faster than the traditional method we also do a, a site since we have 23 different routes we compare each route independently you can see no matter which route, we have a significant lower uh, pixel error, basically the prediction um, distance to the, the ground truth. You can see the deep, deep VP method is always lower. And then also one very interesting is like, um, we found a traditional method, they predict the, the VP non-evenly. So on the right, you can see in the middle blue area, um that's the basically they have a lower error rate in in those blue area you can see the deep v deep vp have a uniform blue but on the basically chain at all method you only see in the basically the middle blue have a um, lower score but when the bench point if the bench point is showing appear too high or too low in the image you get a significant error so because I I think if the road is if most of the images is road, uh, you will get a lot of bias, a lot of noise from a uh, shadow and lay marks on the ground, and if the VP's location is really low on the image, um, that means not much road information, boundary information you will be able to extract from the traditional method, but compared with the VP is more uniform because when we train the image, it's also uniform trained on the each VP location. Each VV location have a same amount of uh, training data set. So here's a quick visualization for the CNN. So in the beginning, uh, neural networks start to learn a little bit basic features of um, like a raw mark, and then in the layer two, you can see you start to learn some not only the the stuff on the road, you can also learn where is the horizon line, where is horizon line look like. And to the higher level, you start to get the, the entire like uh, the road shape, and overall you'll be able to see. They will learn the entire setup of the scene. We also do a quick quick uh testing about the uh, four collective layer 
size. So we found as long as your FC6, FC7, the node size is greater than your uh, label size. In here, our label is 225. So if, as long as like uh, the node is more than 225, usually the, the, it doesn't really change the, the accuracy too much. But once you pass the 225, like 256 here, uh, once you, you go to 128, the accuracy starts to drop. So that just allows us to train a lot quicker if, if we need to um, have a, a faster result. And here's a quick demo video. Uh, how is the, the result looks like? So here is just a, a 3D comparison with a, a two different method arrow. So you can see deep DVP is always lower. So left image is the deep learning method and right image is the traditional um, Gabor based method. And then blue dot is the ground truth. The red dot is the prediction. As you can see, deep VP can predict a lot more accurate than the traditional method. It, if it basically on the on the all different VP location, no matter the ground truth is high, low, in the center, it pretty evenly well. But uh, for the on the right side for the traditional method, you can see VP can go everywhere. It get more noise by by a different scenario. Yeah. So you can see you can see sometimes the VP just sink the top of a roof of a building looks like a magic point but it's not so overall this is the um first vanishing point detect using the the deep learning method and then it definitely outperformed with all the vanishing point detector method um up to date i think and we also contribute on the world largest vanishing point data set that's free available for everyone to use yeah, and then because this automation automatic data collection method, we'll be able to even increase in the data size, maybe 10 million or even bigger in the futures. And then we publish the result. We submit the result in uh, IRS 2016. Yeah. So finally, um, that's all three research I'm talking about. Now I'm going to talk about the entire full integrated system. Basically, we put all the components in the entire navigation system to create a full autonomous robot. So as you can see here, the robot basically you will have a different um, localization system, which we use in the, our lab and other lab mates previous work. His PGC is, is about vision localization. And my work is more focused on the visual role recognition and then also we add the obstacle avoidance to perform the entire full automate um, navigation system. Here's a video. We present BioBot 2.0, an autonomous mobile robot designed to operate in urban environments. The goal of the project is to create service robots that can be deployed for various tasks that require long range travel. Over the past two years, Biobot has successfully traversed various paths across the USC campus. The robot has to recognize and follow the road, avoid obstacles such as pedestrians and service vehicles, and find its way to the goal. Biobot utilizes a 16-core computing platform and is equipped with sensors such as an inertial measurement unit, front-facing cameras, two laser rangefinders, and wheel encoders. Biobot represents its surroundings in a hierarchical way. It uses a topological map for global localization and a grid occupancy map for local navigation. These maps are estimated by perceptual modules such as road recognition, obstacle avoidance, and landmark matching. The system recognizes the road visually by utilizing image contour segments to detect the vanishing point, which indicates the direction of the road. In addition, it also tracks the road lines to estimate the lateral position of the robot. This technique performs robustly despite the presence of occluding pedestrians and shadows. For obstacle avoidance, the robot uses a laser rangefinder to populate the grid occupancy map. It then generates a rigid path to the goal using A-star and refines it using the elastic band algorithm. 
Furthermore, the system computes motor commands while accounting for robot shape and velocity using the dynamic window approach. To localize in the topological map, the system models two human visual capabilities. One is extracting the gist of a scene to quickly classify for segment location. The second is identifying salient landmarks to pinpoint the robot position. The localization system is responsible for informing the robot when and which way to turn at an intersection. Here, the navigation moves the goal to direct the robot to the right. Another time where localization sends a signal is when the robot is approaching the goal. Hi Christian. Hi Bio. Here are your books. Thank you very much Biobot. You're welcome. Further information can be found at ilab.usc.edu slash biobot2. Okay, so that's pretty much the entire system. And then we have been testing on the many different test route in the USC campus. So as you can see here is all the route we be able to travel. The black route means we, we are able to drive on it. And then those uh, three colors route is the, the fur, fuller detail testing route. So we're testing on those three route in different condition with uh, different pedestrian density, lighting condition, running at a different speed and then collect uh, many um, real world data. And then we will want to analyze, make sure we be able to run really smoothly on those em environment. So overall, we create, um, basically we testing more than 11 kilometer on the, at the USC campus. And that's also very extensive tested for, to make sure this system really works in those unconstrained pedestrian environment. And then, the result uh, is published in the uh, IRAS 2013 and then also JFR Journal 2014. And the full extension work of the, my PhD, it could be uh, basically more autonomous initialized where is the robot location, integrate entire fourth SLAM system on top. And then since we acquire the 3D so, um, LiDAR, we'll be able to integrated 3D obstacle avoidance on top. Then and then also we can do some um, like a pedestrian interaction with the, the robot. So we can have some HRI running on top of the system and then interact more with the robot. So this pretty much uh, finished my talk. And then I will I'll be thank thanks for listening to this talk. Yeah. And then definitely my future work will be hours keep working on the 3D printing area. And then my primary uh, interest will be those three, 3D printing in the advanced manufacturing, self-driving driving car, and also robot automation. And I would like to thank um, everyone in the iLab that gave us a lot of uh, help. Uh, primarily the Dr. E.D. lab, really my advisor. Like give me a lot of um, advice and let me to learn a lot, a lot of different things in the iLab. And also, I will especially thanks for Dr. Christian Siagen. Basically, he's my mentor. And then to we work, I work with him for almost 10 years now. And then we work together with a lot of robot project. So thanks everyone for listening to my talk. Uh, the talk is finished here. Thank you.